Hi, my name is Victoria. The following report revolves around affordable housing advocates and action groups. Sent a delegation to City Hall to deliver a letter to Mayor Olivia Chow requesting the City of Toronto to reverse the sale of 214 to 230 Sherburne to the development company Kingset Capital. The developer has submitted plans for a 47-story condo to be built in that property. 230 Fight Back Group, the Shelter and Housing Justice Network, and other community organizations have proposed social housing at the site as a way of easing the affordable housing crisis in this neighborhood and as a way to combat the gentrification that's removing needed vital services and displacing residents. We're not going to allow another condo tower to be built at the Ambassador Sherman. A delegation gathered at City Hall on Tuesday, July 18th to demand that Mayor Olivia Chow live up to her pledge and create more social housing and to buy back these lands. RPTV News interviewed Gaetan Aro, member of 230 Fight Back. Let's hear what he has to say. My name is Gaetan Aro. Uh, I'm a member of uh, 230 Fight Back. Uh, and also, I've worked in the Danda, uh, Dundas Sherburne area for the last 35 years. I'm retired now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why are we here today? Well, we're here today because uh, well, a very quick history is in, in 2008, three rooming houses were shut down at Dundas and Sherburne, 214, 230 Sherburne, we call it. Uh, and the lot has been empty for uh, over uh, 15 years now. And uh, one of the rooming houses is still standing because it's an old rooming house. Uh, it's got historical value. And it, was a, it was a rooming house uh, in, in 1911. So we began a campaign in 2013 for the city to expropriate or buy the land to build social housing. Uh, last year, uh, the owner put the property up for sale. The city put a bid on it, we were hoping that everything would go okay, but uh, a company named Kingset Capital uh, outbid the city. So we're here today to tell, uh, and they want to build a 47-story condo on on the site, which we're saying uh, we don't want and we're going to fight and it'll happen. So we're here today to, uh, our demand is that the city, uh, our, our demand hasn't changed, but the city uh, negotiate with the owners, which is now Kingside Capital, uh, and, and to purchase the property and if they won't sell, that they expropriate it. So we are here today, we sent a letter a week ago to the mayor's office. Mayor Chow, and uh, we came here, 30 people, some came from as far as two hours away, and, and, and we were expecting someone, it didn't have to be Olivia Chow at this point in time, I know there's lots going on, so we, uh, we were expecting staff to uh, accept a delegation or the group uh, to give us about half hours to, to tell them what it is that we want uh, the, the mayor's office to do. And right now, the response, so we've been waiting uh, close to an hour, uh, for some kind of response, and the only people we've been dealing with right now is security. Not a single person from the mayor's office has come out to even talk to us. I don't know what's going on in that back room, uh, I, and, and, and surely the mayor's office has a staff that, that, that could deal with this. Uh, and um, we uh, we had better receptions at times from uh, John Tory, although he never met with us. Uh, at least they sent a staff out. You know, they would take uh, our information and whatever. Uh, we are expecting much, much more today from, from Olivia Chow, uh, and we're, we're going to wait it out a while. Uh, but uh, if, um, if nothing, if, if, if no staff, if there's a response from mayor's office, then we'll have to regroup and, and, and assess you know, how we're going to deal with Olivia Chow. Uh, and and, and uh, this, is, this is a very, very simple situation where you have 30 people came out today uh, to sit down with them, many of them from the community, many of them who worked in the area to say we have an, an, an issue and it, it, it's an important issue and, and if this is where you're going to treat it then, then uh, we're going to begin to think of you as, as no different than the past administration. When you say um, expropriate, yeah. what does that mean? Well expropriate means that if, if the landlord doesn't want to sell the property at Kingston Capital, they begin a process where they can expropriate. By that, they can take the land. 
they compensate, they would compensate the owner, so King's uh, Capital would get compensated. I mean, they do it all the time. They do it for the transit, for instance, like when they want to build a transit line, they would have expropriated a lot of land if people didn't want to buy it. They, uh, they expropriate a whole bunch of land uh, uh, for the Dundas Square in the early 2000s. It happens a lot when they want to build, they want to build a, a road or a highway, so the person they want to send, they, they can expropriate, and they usually give you know, market value for for the land. So here we're saying, yeah, that's one, one of the options that you should uh, consider. So, so they get money in return for expropriating it, yes. a certain amount of space for um, affordable housing? Or well, for well, so 214, 230 Sherburne. So we were asking them to expropriate or buy the land off the old owner. Uh, just so you know, the, the old owner, the Teninja family, uh, paid uh, between uh, 1986 and 1996 for seven, uh, for seven lots. They paid uh, uh, $850,000 for that land. Uh, in 2023, when Kingset bought the land, they paid $53 million. Uh, you just, just, you just, you don't understand what's going on in the neighborhood. So we, we can't allow this to happen. We can't allow condos to be, every, all the property in the area to be bought up and, and condos go up because it just, people are, get displaced. Uh, for people who know the area, you know, it's, it, it, it has a, a, a big infrastructure of, of, of hostels and soup kitchens and ho uh, day shelters, health centers that are there. Uh, so by building these, these condos, just to give you a sense of what's happening, be, between Church and Sherburne, which is a 2.2 kilometer stretch along the last quarter, there are 11 condo developments, four of them are finished, seven of them in the process of being done. They're, they're bringing in 6,372 condos along that small corridor. They're, they're investing something like almost $3 billion in just that corridor alone. And all that's doing is, is, is just driving everybody out of the neighborhood. It's, it's, it's a, one of the oldest working class neighborhood. Uh, you know, going back to the 1850s when, when we had uh, industri industry in, in, in the south end of the downtown east, I and mean, all that industry is gone right now. Uh, but it, it's been a very depressed area for a long, long time. But now Bay Street wants to buy it. Like, when I mean Bay Street, I, literally the finance district is like, we can see it from Dundas and Sherburn. We can see the Scotia Bank, which is where Kingsett is. So they're now investing in that neighborhood, buying up everything. What does this mean to you? Well, to me, it, 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 means, uh, it means everything in the sense that if we allow uh, them to build at Dundas and Sherburne, uh, yes. for us, the neighborhood is gone. So we, we've drawn a land in the sand. We say, you know, uh, we said, we, and we've, we've gone to Kingstead a couple of times and told them we don't want you uh, and we're going to fight you uh, with everything we have that, that, so that this doesn't happen. Uh, and, uh, and we want the city uh, to be on our side. Olivia Child is going to have to decide, and Chris Moyes, who's the councillor, is going to have to decide which side they're on. Because if they don't buy that property, the only thing left right now is this condo to go up. And they have to decide if that's what they want, and we're saying no, we're, we're not going to have to have it. So, the, so we're, it's gearing up to be a, a huge battle down the road. I mean, the interesting thing is that King set in an article last week mentioned that uh, they're looking at a whole bunch of uh, other options, including selling the land that they just bought a year ago, which means that the door is open, and, and that's why this is an important, it's important to meet with the mayor's office to say, listen, this is what's going on. We want you to begin negotiating or looking at buying the land uh, and figure out what that process would look like. But right now, we're, we're at the door and we're, 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 we're talking to a wall. Except now I'm talking to you, which is nice. We're, we're not going to let it happen. And I think, I think what Olivia needs to understand is that, you know, whether she has to decide which side she's on, like Chris Morris. So you decide, Olivia, and, and staff, which side you're going to be on. Because if you allow that, that tower to, 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 to be built at that corner, we'll know what side you're on. And, 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 we want, and we came here today, a, a, a very simple question. Which side are you on? Will you support us? Will you, will you allow social housing to be built on? Will you negotiate? And we can't even get there today because this is what we got, right? This is it. Look, this is it. This is this is the new. This, this is this is this is the hope. This is the hope. A locked door. This is the hope. Not a single staff. 
comes out to acknowledge us, to say, or even to say, we screwed up, you know, we got your letter, but we, uh, can we arrange a meeting? No, we, nothing. Shame. Shame. Nothing. Shame. 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 And the next time we come, on another day, the, 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 our temperament will be different. Because, because this office, the mayor's office, knows damn well, Olivia knows damn well uh, what Van Das and Sherburn is. And, and, and how desperate our, our people are for housing. Today we, we're, we're walking away. But the next time, we'll, it'll be different. If Kingset owns the land, yes. how is it that the city can just buy back? Okay, so here's the situation. Kingset uh, owns the land. Uh, they want to build a 47 tower on the land. They've made applications to do that. Uh, it's in the process going through the planners right now. Uh, but my understanding is that uh, the planners receive uh, the proposal and wrote back to Kingset saying there's some issues with it. You know, we want you to address those. And that was like six, seven months ago, maybe longer than that. And Kingset has not responded, which is interesting. So, so right now, yes, technically Kingset owns the, the property. So our argument is, number one, is why did, and we've met with a guy named uh, Bill Logar and, and uh, David uh, Vernon. And we, we, yeah, we, we, yeah we, we did something like we did today. We, we took 15 people there, we went unannounced, and we went up to their office, and we, we said we want, you know, we want you to sell back the, the land. So we had a 15-minute discussion with them about why, why did you buy it, knowing that there had been a 10-year battle for that land, that, that the city wanted to buy it. So why did you bid against them, uh, given that you have this relationship with the city, where the city has given them, well, so just a little bit of history. So Kingset in 2019 uh, were, uh, was a company that was responsible for uh, having uh, 150 seniors lose their housing either indirectly or indirectly, along with this guy named Ben uh, Ashkenazi. Uh, they own the, the property. So in the summer of 2019, these seniors are told they have to be out by Christmas, and they own the building, they, 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 along with this other guy. And uh, all of the seniors got evicted. And then a year and a half later, uh, the city bought 877 Young from Kingset for uh, almost $100 million, which was a lot of money. They, they sh uh, through the federal, so they shouldn't have paid that much, but they did. Uh, and then six months later, the Kingside gets a contract with the City of Toronto to uh, build, uh, uh, to develop, redevelop a piece of land, uh, uh, 705 Warden, I think it is, and they, uh, so they get this contract. Uh, and then, not long after that, when this property comes up, they bid against the city, knowing very well that the city wanted it. So we're saying, listen, this is this is not good, why are you doing that? Uh, we don't want you. So our argument is now to go to the city and saying, listen, we want you to negotiate with Kingset, because nothing has changed for us. The owner has changed, but nothing has changed in terms of what we want. And we want you to negotiate with them so that we get that land to build social housing that is much needed at Dundas and Sherba. Uh, and in uh, an article, an article last week, uh, Kingset told the Toronto Star that they're looking at options for the property right now. Didn't mention the 47 story one, which is interesting. Also looking at the option of reselling the land. So that opens the door for the city to go in and negotiate. And, and we want to, to begin to work with the city uh, to try and, and do this. Yeah. Yeah, we're almost, we're almost done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, yeah, we're almost done. Okay. Well, that's all that's the questions it. I have. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, follow us on social media. And for more information, check out our website.